The stars came out for the 11th annual ESPY Awards in Hollywood last night, including Gary Payton stylishly dressed in a purple and gold ensemble designed by the Lakers, and yes, the new uni fit like a glove. Today it was his team who couldn't wait to show off its new look, formally unveiling Payton and Carl Malone. Lisa Salters caught up with Hollywood's newest supporting actors on their red carpet. To the two newest Lakers, Carl Malone and Gary Payton, welcome to both of you and thanks for joining me uh, this afternoon. First question I have is, this was not as out of the blue as a lot of people might think that it was. When was the first time that you guys started thinking that you might want to play together? Well, we, uh, the first time was uh, when Seattle played Utah in Utah. Um, it was one of the things that we came to, the captains meeting in the middle of the court and after everybody broke up, me and Carl, you know, Carl's like, you know, everything's going to be okay. You know, we just got to be patient. You know, we got to take our time. You know, uh, we might pick and cross paths in the, in the, in the, in the, later on in our career. I said free agency came up this year, and, and Carl said that uh, he would play um, here if I would sign here. Uh, it was a done deal. And, I, and that's when I heard that, uh, I committed here, and, and Carl committed here. Carl, why did you say that? Why did you say you'd come if, if Gary would come? No, it's just because we had we had talked about it early and in this business that we're in with a close-knit family as NBA players and when you give somebody your word or your nod we know what that means and for me to start off with a future Hall of Famer and he retired and to finish with a Hall of Famer is like a dream come true. How difficult is it going to be for you guys to be the players that you've always been and to be the leaders that you've always been when you've already said that this is kobe brian's team this is shaquille o'neal's team well it's not going to be hard i mean uh, me and uh carl is veterans you know we're, we're a lot of we're older than um, shaq and, and kobe we know how to adjust we'll make it right you know uh, i'm going to be the leader on the floor because i'm going to have the ball most of the time so i i think that for me to be the leader and be the one that understands and get everybody in, in, their, in their spots make everybody happy is that's my job this is Shaq and Kobe's team. They're probably they're gonna still score 25 and 26 apiece. We're just gonna be there helping it out uh, to get an extra 40 points from two guys or extra 38 points. But you have a message for Shaquille already. Oh yeah, he gonna have run. to. He gotta run, and I'm and we know it. And he, I didn't told him, called him, told him. He's gonna run. Uh, I know he's out there right now working out. We know that I'm gonna give the ball to who out there running. If it falls out there running, he's going to get it. If Kobe's out there running, he's going to get it. And I think Shaq's going to get out there, too. Anything less than the championship, will it mean anything? It's a failure. It's a failure. Everybody's going to be gunning for us because they think we done stacked up the house. And that's just the way it's got to be. And I think that's our goal is to win the championship. And we're going to go out, we're going to come ready to, to do that. Relief pitcher Armando Benitez was traded from the Mets to the Yankees for prospects. Just the 12th deal in history between the New York rivals is a gamble for the Yankees. Benitez has allowed the most postseason home runs of any reliever in history, although he's also had the most saves in the majors over the past three-plus seasons. In the Bronx, Benitez will be a setup man, not a closer. Yeah, he's a confusing case. But one thing is clear. Benitez has been helping the Yankees for years. We recall in tonight's bonus cuts. Without Armando Benitez, there'd be no Jeffrey Mayer. Everyone remembers Derek Jeter's shot to right that tied game one of the 96 ALCS and the young fan who caught it. Less memorable is the man who served the pitch, Baltimore's Armando Benitez. The Orioles returned to the ALCS in 97, and Benitez was at it again. Protecting a 4-2 lead in the eighth inning of Game 2, Benitez promptly walked the tying runs on base. Marquise Grissom then tagged him for a three-run home run, 5-4 Indians. In 98, Yankee Stadium continued to be a house of horrors for Benitez. During the regular season, he plunked Tino Martinez after allowing a grand slam to Bernie Williams. The beanball touched off an on-field riot and prompted this tirade from George Steinbrenner. It was a classless act committed by a guy who I understand has done things like this before. But it'll be suspended for a month. You could really kill a guy the way he threw that ball if you look closely at it. Benitez moved on to the Mets in 99 and quickly made his mark in the NLCS against Atlanta. After trailing 3-0 in the series, New York was three outs away from forcing a Game 7. 
That is until Benitez gave up a game-tying single to Ozzy Guillen. The Mets were eliminated in 11 innings. The Benitez against the Yankees saga continued in Game 1 of the 2000 World Series. With the Mets leading 3-2 in the ninth inning, Benitez allowed the tying run to score after giving up back-to-back -back singles to Luis Colonia and Jose Vizcaino. The Mets lost in 12 innings. And just last month, the Mets held a 3-2 lead in the ninth inning against the Yankees. The Mets were trying to avoid losing the second game of what would become a six-game season sweep at the hands of their crosstown rivals. Benitez blew the save in the ninth by walking four batters to force in the tying run. The Yankees prevailed in extra innings. Just another win the Yankees owe to Benitez. Now they can thank him in person. Bonus Cuts, brought to you by Burger King. Come on over, the fire's ready at Burger King. In America, where the burger is king, Burger King is proud to introduce our juiciest, most piled-high burger ever. The new Great American Burger. How juicy is it? At least two or three napkins worth. Burger King, come on over, the fire's ready. Timid? Hardly. Controversial? Always. He should be thrown out of the game even before a warning. Bobby V's got something to say. In my opinion. Bobby Valentine. Part of the new Baseball Tonight. Weeknights at 10 and midnight on ESPN. It's a weapon more powerful than you could ever imagine. On July 25th... Take us to the cradle of life. It's your destiny. The fate of the world rests in the hands of one woman. Academy Award winner Angelina Jolie is Lara Croft. Are you truly prepared for what you're about to learn? Tomb Raider, the cradle of life. Rated PG-13, Friday, July 25th, everywhere. Center. What do you buy? Laura Croft Tomb Raider. Cradle of Life. July 25th. Rated PG-13. Next Sports Center with Steve Levy and John Anderson at 11 p.m. Eastern. Jose Lima looks to improve 6-0. Roy Halladay goes for 14 straight and the latest on Kobe Bryant tonight at 11 Eastern on Sports Center. The Chiefs have reached an agreement on a seven-year deal with first-round draft pick running back Larry Johnson from Penn State. Johnson was selected 27th overall. He rushed for over 2,000 yards last season for the Nittany Lions. And tonight's top story, the Eagle County, Colorado DA will announce tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Time whether Kobe Bryant will be charged with sexually assaulting a 19-year-old woman. You can see the news conference live on ESPN and ESPN News. Chris, Matt? Tiger Woods started off the British Open with a triple bogey in the par 4, 442-yard first hole. Tough way to go. It is, but he had plenty of company. He's not the only one struggling out of the gate. Jerry Kelly shot an 11 on the first hole on his way to an 86 after the round. He said, I'll remind people I made a 30-footer on the hole. <laughs> he promptly withdrew from the event. Sports reporters coming up on ESPN2. Right here, Pete Rose on trial.